An oft underappreciated aspect of the war between worldviews is the impact that storytelling has on worldview development and the impact that worldviews has on the types of stories that are told. As the 21st century Western mind is more and more engulfed in postmodern and atheistic thinking, so the stories that are told in the 21st century veer more and more towards postmodern and atheistic themes. As creatures made in the image of God, telling stories and building fictional worlds are profound ways in which we can reflect our Creator. History is fundamentally God's story. He is the ultimate author. When we, as His creatures, put pen to paper to write epics like Star Wars, The Lord of the Rings, Narnia, or Macbeth, we are reflecting our Creator. The fictional characters we create and the fictional worlds they operate in are our own creations. What makes for a good story? A good story that resonates with people will invariably have to be a story that more closely reflects the way in which our Creator created us and our world. Coherence, structure, elements of predictability and unpredictability, one and many, triumph of good over evil. Good stories will glorify God. This is not to say that every story has to be about God or Christianity, but it is to say that every good story is Christian. Let's consider an example. George Lucas's Star Wars saga provides a wonderful example of how storytelling principles rooted in timeless biblical concepts can create a narrative with profound cultural impact. Firstly, at the heart of Star Wars lies a moral framework that echoes the Christian understanding of good and evil. However, unlike some simplistic narratives that portray good and evil as equal, opposing forces, Star Wars, like Christianity, presents evil as a corruption of the good. In the Star Wars universe, the dark side of the Force is not an equal opposite to the light, but a perversion that must be eradicated. This mirrors the Christian concept that evil is not a primordial force, but a rebellion against God's good creation. Just as God remains sovereign over all in Christian theology, the Force in Star Wars is fundamentally good, with the dark side seen as a corruption to be overcome. This nuanced portrayal of good and evil is then visually reinforced throughout the saga. Lucas used color symbolism reminiscent of biblical imagery. The light coloring of the Jedi robes and blue and green lightsaber colors portray goodness, while the black-clad Sith with their red lightsabers mirror the powers of darkness described in Ephesians 6 verse 12. This clear moral framing reflects the Christian understanding that absolute moral truths exist, that the good is something that can be known and studied, and that evil, likewise, is something that can be known and ought to be destroyed. Secondly, central to the Star Wars narrative is the theme of redemption, a concept deeply rooted in Christian theology. The arc of Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, reflects the amazing Christian truth that no one is beyond God's saving grace. As Paul writes in Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Vader's eventual turn from darkness, spurred by his love for his son, echoes this profound truth, illustrating that even those who have fallen furthest can be redeemed. Thirdly, the power of family relationships is at the core of both Star Wars and Christianity. The saga's focus on Luke's belief in his father's innate goodness and Vader's ultimate choice to save his son at the cost of his own life reflects the transformative power of familial love. This emphasis on family as a redemptive force aligns closely with the Bible's portrayal of family as both a core social unit and a metaphor for God's relationship with humanity. Fourthly, throughout Star Wars, mentorship plays a crucial role, reflecting the biblical emphasis on passing wisdom between generations. Characters like Obi-Wan and Yoda embody the principle found in Proverbs 22.6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. This intergenerational transmission of knowledge and values from one generation to the next mirrors the Christian call to discipleship and the importance of spiritual guidance. Each parent is called to discipline their children and to educate them thoroughly about God and the complexities of this world. Finally, Star Wars powerfully illustrates the profound impact of individual choices a theme central to Christian theology. From Adam and Eve's fateful decision in Eden to Christ's teachings on the narrow and wide gates, Scripture consistently emphasizes the weight of moral choices. 
This principle is vividly portrayed in Anakin Skywalker's journey. Despite repeated warnings about the dark side's allure, Anakin's eventual fall carries catastrophic consequences, not just for himself, but for the entire galaxy. His choice leads to the near extinction of the Jedi and ushers in an era of oppression under the Empire, echoing how sin in Christian theology affects not just the individual, but ripples out to impact all of creation. Adam and Eve's failure in the Garden of Eden despite God's warning also ushered in an era of suffering and corruption, with the entire creation groaning under the weight of sin. Yet despite Anakin's failure, there is hope for redemption and restoration. Hence why Star Wars Episode 3, which portrayed the fall of Anakin, is fittingly followed by Star Wars Episode 4, titled A New Hope. In the same way, after Adam and Eve's fall into sin, God immediately followed their failure with a promise of future salvation that will be provided in Jesus Christ. Lucas intentionally wove timeless values like friendship, loyalty, and self-sacrifice into his space opera. These virtues, emphasized throughout the Bible, find new expression in the bonds between Luke, Han, and Leia, and in Obi-Wan's sacrifice. By presenting these values in a fresh context, Star Wars reintroduces audiences to foundational Christian virtues in a way that feels both novel and deeply familiar. The enduring popularity of Star Wars demonstrates the hunger in human hearts for stories that reflect deeper truths about our existence. This resonance can be understood through the lens of theistic realism, a concept we introduced earlier in the book that acknowledges that all people, whether they recognize it or not, live in God's created world and thus intuitively recognize certain timeless truths, even if they cannot justify why they principally experience or believe in these truths. Even those who might deny God's existence can be moved by stories that reflect the reality of his creation. In this way, storytelling can become a great way to spark a conversation about the gospel. As Christians engage in storytelling, whether through film, literature, or other media, the success of Star Wars reminds us of the power of narratives that embrace rather than reject the foundational truths of our faith. Star Wars succeeded not just because of its groundbreaking special effects or imaginative world-building, but because it tapped into truths that resonate with the image of God in each of us. Truths that find their fullest expression in the Christian worldview. By presenting a nuanced understanding of good and evil, the possibility of redemption, the importance of family and mentorship, the power of individual decisions, and timeless values, Lucas created a story that, while not explicitly Christian, honors many godly principles. In doing so, he crafted a narrative that continues to captivate audiences worldwide, testifying to the enduring power of stories that reflect the deeper truths of our existence in God's created order. Building on our discussion of Star Wars' alignment with Christian principles, we can now examine how recent adaptations under Disney's stewardship have diverged from these foundational elements, largely due to the postmodern worldview influencing new creators. This shift not only alters the essence of Star Wars, but also diminishes its resonance with audiences. Family values, once central to the saga, have been notably sidelined in recent Star Wars productions. The Skywalker legacy, built on the powerful father-son dynamic, has been largely dismantled. For example, Rey, a protagonist introduced in the sequel trilogy, is presented as disconnected from any family lineage, reflecting a postmodern tendency to view individuals as atomized units rather than part of a greater familial or societal structure. Mentorship, a cornerstone of the original trilogy, has been replaced by a celebration of innate abilities requiring little guidance or training. Rey's rapid mastery of force abilities without any mentorship, in fact, she had to mentor her mentor, undermines the valuable lessons of patience, discipline, and the wisdom passed between generations that were so crucial in Luke's journey. This shift aligns with postmodern skepticism towards traditional sources of authority and knowledge. Mentorship is seen as violence towards an individual, something that undermines someone's subjective truth and experience. To solidify the rejection of generational wisdom, the Jedi Code was physically destroyed in the movie, as if thousands of years of wisdom is worth nothing. As an aside, we see these same tendencies in modern Christian churches as well, where any new novel doctrines, 
which many times are outright heresies, are accepted and celebrated in complete ignorance and disregard of church history. The coherent and consistent world-building that made the original Star Wars universe feel real and lived in has given way to a more fragmented approach. The laws governing the use of the Force, space travel, and even the nature of life and death seem to change based on narrative convenience rather than internal logic. This inconsistency reflects the postmodern rejection of overarching meta-narratives in favor of subjective, situational truths. The consequences of choices, a key theme in both Christianity and the original Star Wars trilogy, have been severely undermined. Characters die and return with increasing frequency, diluting the weight of sacrifice and the finality of death. Emperor Palpatine's return in The Rise of Skywalker is perhaps the most egregious example, undoing the impact of Vader's redemptive sacrifice and the entire arch of the Lucas-era movies. This approach echoes the postmodern discomfort with absolute consequences and the desire for endless reinvention. Perhaps most strikingly and concerningly, the clear distinction between good and evil, once a hallmark of the series, has been blurred in pursuit of moral ambiguity. While nuanced characters can be compelling, e.g. a character who is morally conflicted, the loss of a moral center leaves the narrative feeling unanchored and relativistic. The distinction between light and dark has been largely removed. For instance, an actor starring in the Disney Star Wars productions called The Acolyte said that, The best part about Star Wars is there is no good or evil. It depends on what side you're standing on. These changes reflect a broader shift away from the Christian foundations that Lucas drew upon. In their place, we find a more relativistic, individualistic, and postmodern worldview that simply cannot provide the same depth of meaning or resonance. The result is a narrative that, while visually spectacular, often feels hollow at its core. In a postmodern world often characterized by moral relativism and fragmented narratives, stories that echo the coherent, hope-filled worldview of Christianity have the power to captivate imaginations and perhaps point audiences towards the ultimate story of God's love and redemption. The stories we consume, and more crucially, those we allow our children to experience, play a pivotal role in shaping their worldviews. Children naturally absorb the worldview demonstrated and taught in their immediate environment. The content our children engage with becomes a powerful force in molding their understanding of the world. My own experience with George Lucas's original Star Wars saga exemplifies this profound impact on personal development and education. However, today's modern productions often espouse values and ideas that stand in stark contrast to God's will as revealed in Scripture. These new narratives, saturated with postmodern ideology, can subtly influence young minds in ways that diverge from biblical truth. If we permit our children to consume this new media without discernment or guidance, we risk inadvertently nurturing a postmodern worldview in them. As Christian parents and guardians, we bear the responsibility of carefully curating the stories our children encounter. By intentionally exposing our children to narratives that reflect Christian principles, whether they're explicitly Christian or simply resonate with biblical truths, we can help counterbalance the influence of postmodern media. Ultimately, as we've emphasized over and over in this book up to this point, nothing, including the stories we allow into our homes, are neutral. Either something honors God or does not. Stories in particular are powerful shapers of thought and belief. As stewards of our children's spiritual and intellectual growth, we must approach this responsibility with wisdom, discernment, and an unwavering commitment to raising our children in the light of God's truth.